Hi, I'm John Like Fun, and for today's Hippo Short, we're going to cover a cool mnemonic that systematically evaluates all of the electrocardiographic red flags that you need to be looking for on the EKG whenever a patient presents with syncope or presyncope. So let's get to it. Let's take a look at this EKG from a young, otherwise healthy uh, male who comes in with exertional syncope and now presents with this EKG. Do you see the abnormality? Do you see the shortened PR interval and the slurring upstroke into the QRS complex? That's right, that's called the delta wave. And that is suggested for Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or WPW syndrome. But besides that, there's a whole laundry list of red flags that we should be looking for on the ECG. And where do we start? How do we keep it all straight? Well, I have the mnemonic for you. And it's the simple alphabet, A through I. Let's start with A. A stands for aortic stenosis, specifically critical aortic stenosis. Now, there's no classic ECG finding for this. However, it's a reminder for us to go back to the patient and carefully listen to the heart to see if we can hear the classic crescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur that you find in critical AS. Take a listen. Moving on to B, B is for Brugada syndrome. You're looking for the classic cove type or saddleback type morphology with ST elevation and at least one lead in V1 through V3. C is for corrected QT interval. Look at the corrected QT interval, especially if it's greater than 500 milliseconds, you gotta be worried for a patient with syncope or presyncope if they're flipping in and out of torsade de point. D is for delta wave. As we saw earlier, you're looking for the shortened PR interval, the slurred upstroke into the QRS complex that's suggestive of WPW or Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. E is for epsilon wave. You're looking for notching of the terminal portion of the QRS that suggests ARVD, or arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. F is for fluid-filled heart, pericardial tamponade. You're looking for the electrical alternance and diffuse low voltage throughout the ECG. G is for giant PE or pulmonary embolism. You're looking for the saddle umbilis, right? And you're looking for acute right heart strain, either an incomplete or complete new onset right bundle branch block, right axis deviation, inferior T waves in leads V1 through V3, or maybe the S1, Q3, T3. H is for hypertrophy, left ventricular hypertrophy in a patient who otherwise shouldn't have it, especially the dagger-like Q waves that might suggest hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The first I is for intervals. We talked about the corrected QT. How about the PR? Second degree heart block type two Mopes pattern. Third degree heart block or complete heart block. Maybe the QRS is widened. New onset left bundle, right bundle branch block or a biofascicular trifascicular block. The last I is for ischemia, right? So in the setting of ischemia, your heart might be dying and it's not pumping very well so you're not perfusing your brain. And that wraps up the entire systematic way to look for all the electrocardiographic red flags the next time you see a patient presenting with syncope or presyncope. That's it for today's Hippo Short. If you want more information, head on over to hippoeducation.com. My name is John Like Fun. I'll see you next time.